Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters of Christ, today we celebrate the Feast of St. the Apostle. Now, we may not recognize Matthias from the Gospels. It's because he was chosen to replace Judas after the ascension of Christ, but before the sending of the Holy Spirit. So here today, we celebrate the first successor of an apostle and one who hopefully will pray for us and was one of the, thir the first 13, if not the first 12. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment and confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let us say together the first form of the confitier. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask, I sincerely regret my sins, and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to do one kind thing for someone else sometime in the next day. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. They proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was, known to, who was also known as Justice and Matthias. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world with end. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God our Father, through the casting of lots, Matthias was called to be numbered among your apostles. Through his example, may we also learn to serve and love you whenever and however we are called. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers and sisters. There was a group of about 120 persons in the one place. He said, My brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. Judas was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry. <coughs> 
For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his encampment become desolate, and may no one dwell in it, and may another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time, the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, The Lord will give him a seat with the leaders of his people. The Lord will give him a seat with the leaders of his people. Praise you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. The Lord will give him a seat with the leaders of his people. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. The Lord will give him a seat with the leaders of the people. Who is like the Lord our God, who is enthroned on high, and looks upon the heavens and the earth below? The Lord will give him a seat with the leaders of his people. He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill he lifts up the poor, to seat them with princes, with the princes of his own people. The Lord will give him a seat with the leaders of his people. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips, I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything that I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Today, as we celebrate this feast of St. Matthias, we hear in the first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles how the Apostles are going to move forward once they move on from this world. 
when there was an, there was an office for 12 apostles. Judas, having betrayed our Lord, took his own life, thus ending it. And that left the office of apostle empty. And the other 11 came to that realization, and Peter took the lead on this and brought up that we, they needed to fill the empty office. And so they took of one who was with them from the beginning, a disciple, if you will, that did still learn at the feet of Jesus. And it says they cast lots, which basically means they voted. And they voted for Matthias. They had their reasons. It doesn't say why. We can only assume it was a secret ballot. But it was guided by the Holy Spirit even before Pentecost. And that is the way we continue today the succession of the apostles in the church. When one retires or dies, another one is appointed to that office. We've seen that very recently in our own diocese after Bishop Stanley Belinsky, God rest his soul, passed away a couple of years ago. The office was vacant for a while until we got together in a synod, a special synod, and voted and elected Bishop Rafalco, now Bishop Rafalco, who was pastor here at Kiwani. And Bishop Rafalco asked me to come here to take his place in Kiwani. So we, when the offices are empty, it is incumbent that we refill them, not replace the one who went before, but succeed in that office so that the faith and the teaching continue to go on from generation to generation to generation. And what is that teaching? Why is it so important that we continue this progression all the way from the apostles to today? Well, Jesus says here in the gospel, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus called his apostles his friends, which means the successors of his apostles, our bishops, are his friends, especially if they remain in his love. And we are called as Christians to follow those successors of the apostles as far as they follow Christ, and also to lay down our lives for our friends, if necessary. Who are our friends? Our friends are the ones who also follow Christ and follow his commandments. The apostles, most of them, died a martyr's death, preaching Christ even at the point where their own lives would be taken. But once their lives were taken, another one came to follow them and continue on. This is how we must be. We must be willing to go all the way, giving the ultimate sacrifice if called upon to die for Christ. Because in that way, the truth continues on against evil and lies. There's nothing, nothing Satan hates more than someone who will lay down their life for their friends. So, if the time comes, when the time comes, what is our choice? Will we follow the apostles like St. Matthias? In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As is a feast day, let us now stay together. The creed that unites us as Christians, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. <coughs> 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. We turn to the great kindness of God the Father, asking him to answer us with his constant help. In faith we pray, and our response is, Lord, have mercy. For the church throughout the world, that the Lord may lead us into a deeper conversion of heart through the practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, guided by the successors of the apostles, the bishops. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all those who govern at the local, state, and federal levels, that the Spirit may guide them in their decision-making for the common good, and that they work for an end to the twin evils of abortion and euthanasia, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those affected by the extreme winter weather last week, especially our parish in San Antonio that suffered significant water damage, that that all may find relief and care through Christ and the generosity of people. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our parish family, that we may be one in the good will of Christ by supporting the works of the church, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, that they may be brought to health and wholeness through the mercy of Christ, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the intention of this Holy Mass, which is for those on our parish prayer list, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For all of our beloved dead and those who will die today, that they may share in the gift and promise of eternal life, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Loving Father, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers, both spoken and unspoken. Please guide us in the right paths and grant us the grace needed to lead lives which are holy and pleasing to you. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The throne of your fathers your sons will have. You shall make them princes through all the land. I will make your name renowned through all generations. Thus nations shall praise you forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice 
which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Almighty Father, receive our gifts which we offer on this feast of St. Matthias, your apostle. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We humbly beg you, the only high priest of your church, never to abandon your flock, but through your blessed apostles and their lawful successors, the Catholic bishops, safeguard it with a lasting care. May those upon whom you bestow the shepherding, teaching, and guidance of the church be courageous, zealous, and filled with apostolic fervor. May they teach the faithful your truth, forgive their sins, and unite them with you. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass will continue with Eucharistic Prayer 4, which is found on page 88 if you are following along. Blessed are you, Lord of all majesty and King of eternal glory, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In him your word was made flesh. In him the fullness of your grace was revealed in splendor. In all things he fulfilled your will and glorified your name. He proclaimed your kingdom to us. He broke the power of darkness over us. He took our guilt upon himself. He reconciled us to you and unlocked a new paradise for us. As the way, the truth, and the life, he has revealed your love to us. He humbled himself and became obedient even to death on a cross. And by rising, restored our life. On the night in which he was betrayed to undergo that suffering which he himself had chosen, he took bread into his hands and, lifting his eyes to you, his heavenly Father, he gave you thanks. He blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup and gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Together. Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection we celebrate. Your return in glory we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, and his exaltation at your right hand. We await his coming in the fullness of majesty. 
we here set forth this sign of our faith in him who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gained for us eternal salvation. Send your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Together, Holy Spirit, come to us, fill us with your gift of grace. Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable sacrifice through which we offer ourselves to you, so that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be a sharing in the body and blood of your Son, May all who receive from your heavenly altar always remain united with you, together with all your saints and chosen ones, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, with St. Matthias, whose memory we keep today, with your prophets and apostles, with your martyrs and confessors, and with all who stand about your throne in praise and prayer. Bless your church throughout the world. Grant it unity and peace. Renew the earth according to your promise. Remember all peoples and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let's say together with confidence to the Father the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety. As we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing, which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. <coughs> On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, on you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Let us say together the second communion prayer. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. 
Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you that you who have followed me in this new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Let us pray. Lord, our God, we rejoice in the memory of St. Matthias, your apostle. As we have shared in your Holy Eucharist, May we be assisted by the prayers of your saints. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May a blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in a prayer for peace in our world, country, state, and localities with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant not so much that I may seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for joining us for our daily Mass today. As a reminder, we do have Stations of the Cross at 6 p.m. this evening. Logistically, we will try to live stream it. I make no promises. I've never done it before. But if we can, we will. Otherwise, please come and join us here if you're in the area at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for the Stations of the Cross. We will also be back at noon Central Standard Time tomorrow for our noon Mass and on Sunday at 9 a.m. for the second Sunday in Lent. We hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and always remain in a state of grace. For all the saints who from their labors rest, all who by faith before the world confessed thy name o jesus be forever blessed alleluia alleluia